Yeah, good morning everyone. Uh, happy to be your MC of the day. Today is an indie track. It's the first time on Casual Connect that we have an indie track like this. And I think it's a good idea because uh, indies are becoming more and more a, v a vital part of the industry. My name is uh, Robert. Um, I'm uh, running my own little game studio, so I'm in, an indie myself. Uh, so I'm pretty proud to be your MC today. Uh, our first talk is uh, from Sebastian Borgé. He is a CEO and co-founder of Pixel, a very nice uh, mobile game studio uh, based in a couple of countries actually. So he's working out of Paris and uh, headquartered in, in San Francisco and uh, people in South America are working for them as well and he's managing them remotely and he's uh, going to talk a little bit about uh, their one of their most popular games, uh, The Sandbox, this was uh, awarded uh, by Apple's iTunes Best of 2012 actually and yeah he will uh, give us uh, some insights about the game and I'm looking pretty much uh, to it. So as we're starting a little bit late, please Thank welcome you. Sebastian. Thank you Robert for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're not too exhausted from the party of yesterday, and I will be able to catch a little bit of your attention today. Um, so my name is Sebastian Borgé. I'm CEO and co-founder of Pixel. Uh, Pixel, as Robert said, is a mobile game studio headquartered in San Francisco. We have also offices in Buenos Aires, in Argentina, and in Paris. We have 15 people in total. Uh, we have a pretty young studio created two years ago and our most popular title so far is uh, a remake of traditional snake game called Do the Grub which made 8 million downloads. Our second most popular title is The Sandbox and today I would like to share you the post uh, some post-mortem facts about this game on iOS. Um, and maybe try to analyze why uh, it has been selected and featured by Apple in its best of apps last year. So the Sandbox was first released in uh, May 2012. Uh, it received good critics from the press while it launched. Uh, you can read a few comments from journalists uh, of uh, specialized mobile gaming press. Uh, but it wasn't always like that. So first, what is the sandbox exactly? It's a physics game where you can create virtual worlds all in 2D in uh, amazing pixel art by combining different physics elements together and they will interact with each other following the laws of physics. So you can play with simple elements such as soil, water, mud, sand, stone, and you also have access to much more complex one, electricity, metal, lava, virus, antivirus, void, etc. Maybe it's better if I show you in a video, so you will uh, be able to understand the concept. So this is the trailer we've published when we launched the game. We tried to make to add some humor to our trailers so it can captivate the attention of people watching it. So These are a few examples of everything that could be created from the game. You have a total uh, freedom of creativity with almost no constraints except the size of the screen. You can create chip tune music. You can create explosions, which are quite fun, in fact. You can create some uh, blueprints with dinosaurs or monuments. or complex circuits, managing temperature, pressure, gravity, with sensors to keep um, of light, of water, and all that. 
The game is already available on iOS. It was launched on 14th of May and it will be soon on Android. All right, let me get back to the presentation. So where did the idea from this game came from? It all started from a um, project of one of our developers, Onimatrix, is his nickname, in uh, Argentina, in our office in Buenos Aires. He had this personal project he developed in Flash and he published on Congregate platform uh, of building a physics simulator. So the game was uh, very rough in terms of of UI, but it already had a very good physical engine. And when we approached him with the idea of making a more casual game for mobile and tablets using that concept, that engine that he developed, he liked the idea. And we assembled a team around him of a game designer and a lead artist. They started working together for a few months until we got the first alpha version uh, working proof of concept on the mobile and tablets. And during an editorial meeting with Apple, where we show them uh, upcoming games we have in our lineup, we've taken a chance to show them the sandbox, this alpha version. Their reaction was really not the one we expected. Actually, the guys from Apple after taking the game one minute in hand, told us that uh, the mechanics were interesting, but the game graphics were really ugly. They were like Commodore 64, very old, uh, very pixelated, and it could never be featured by them, never, ever, because it, this type of game didn't reflect at all the quality of the products they are making. Uh, so after this meeting, of course, our moral, the moral of the team was quite low. We were wondering uh, what should we do because it's very hard to launch a game now on iOS. And knowing that you will never ever get the featuring by Apple, it's even harder because you have to take more risk and if you want your game to not just be a niche game you will need to invest more in marketing so the risk gets even bigger we actually after some discussion internal discussion we decided to trust our first intuition that we were making something really innovating uh, and we continued the project by we increased this we also decided that we should work on the weaknesses and take into account all the feedback they could have given during this sh very short amount of time we met with them. And so we have increased the team by adding a level designer, a second programmer, and a QA tester. We have worked on making the graphics much more appealing, adding shadows effect, better rendering, and all that. And we've pursued the project until we launched. Well, I must say that I think we've, it did pay up for us to not give up at that time. And uh, well, we've been featured at the launch and we've been featured also back in December 2012 when Apple made the best of uh, apps of the year selection. So for us, I think the lesson we have learned here is that you should not give up and always try to make the best quality app and if it's really, really, really good, they will notice you. Uh, so quickly, what are our results so far after the launch? It's about uh, a little bit more, now it's like 10 months after the launch. We've had more than 2.1 million downloads, more than 100,000 DAUs and 160,000 awards shared by player in the online gallery. We've made eight updates, four major ones, four minor bug fixing. So the original content of the game since release has more than doubled in terms of elements and different campaigns and levels. All right, so now let's see, let, let's try to get back on what could have been the reason, what went right and 
maybe we'll find a reason. First, um, when we started this project, we have been very focused on innovation, bringing something new that on the market for the players, not making again a temper run like, a puzzle like, but it was really the first time on that mobile uh, and tablet platform there was uh, a game where you can, this, this type of game is called Powder's Game, they already, already exist on PCs, um, they, they date back from the 80s actually, and we we wanted to make the game much more casual, so we aimed for high quality and we built the team, a strong team, senior team, a team of senior people in the game industry to produce it. So this is how it looks like on computers. This looks like really like DOS or Commodore 64, very rough UI from the 80s, like I said. And this is what we've turned it into on mobile and tablets. So we've made it more uh, appealing. And okay, so I will go faster now a little bit. These are more production details. So on the production, we've been careful to document everything, to be very, very precise, making flows of our AI, uh, of all the features of the game. So that's, I believe, how you target for high quality by making specification while you prototype. We have also have the roadmap where we define all the screen of the game so anybody in the team could know where we are in the development process, what is missing. And we involved the team in, in the brainstorming. They participated to the creation of mockups. They participated uh, to commenting the game design document, bringing their own ideas, and we've checked with them if it could be uh, developed. So we've made prototypes by making a game designer work close to a programmer, the one next to the other. And once it is validated, we have implemented and added the final art. We also have been careful to make uh, the game targeted a different type of player. So we first focused on the hardcore players by creating very complex levels, which puzzles, which take a lot of time to solve. But we also thought about casual players who need time to learn the mechanics. So we built a world uh, campaign mode with tutorial. We thought about social players, so we implemented an online gallery where players could share the creation and get rated by the others. And we added a free mode. We also put some achievements for people who like to collect stuff. Right, now what has gone wrong? So a lot of things have gone wrong, I guess, but let's try to s shorten the list and see, and maybe if we'll give you some tips of what not to do. Um, so we've been uh, quite late into the, the definition of the economy of the game. We also were late integrating a level designer, so the whole campaign tutorial story came uh, late in the production. And we also worked with a publisher called Bulky Pix, who helped us a lot to get um, again in contact with Apple and featured at the launch, but it imposed it us some strict deadlines, so we had to run for some uh, milestones. We, I guess, if there are some developers here, they have all been confronted to this, the update of the OS platform, the update of all the different SDKs you can integrate, so advertising, uh, tracking, analytics, and all that. It's really a pain in the ass. And well, it's difficult to planify, but you always have, you always spend some time adding last minute things, fighting against piracy, so making the in-app purchase more secure, adding uh, requests from the player, dealing with the server side issues. Well, that's a lot of unexpected work that you should uh, try to uh, put in your schedule if you don't want to be uh, rushing all the time. We also underestimated a little bit the um, complexity of the work. 
The game is very simple. You just touch the screen, it drops pixels, they interact. Behind the, comp the dynamics of interaction of this element are complex. These are like the real world physics interactions. And I would like to finish this presentation, this post-mortem story uh, by sharing you some uh, of our best practice that we have applied ourselves and maybe could have explained also why we've been in the best of. First, we believe it's really important to have a beta testing period. We recommend to make it a minimum of two to four weeks. We personally did two months. So we recruited testers using test flights uh, with forums, social networks around us, your, our friends and family. We've created beta forms where we uh, and we uh, have been iterating the process. So every week we sent a new build and we collected feedbacks in all the possible ways, tracking the metrics or uh, feedback forms. We also have been using user testing for, it's a very helpful service, if you know. We've been careful updating the game very often, so we show we care about the existing the players, bringing them new free and paid content. We've been very active on social marketing, always trying to make some humor, animating the Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Tumblr, and YouTube pages. We have the forum where we answer to the player, answer by emails, and every week we make a best of video on YouTube where we publish uh, a, a summary of all the best creation in the game. We also have asked other developers to help us on the, the promotion at the launch and at the very important updates. We believe the developers are your best friends here, this type of conference are the best location where you can make them, and it can cost you nothing to do cross-promotion with them, so it's a great way to acquire users. Apple and Google can also be your friend, but they are very unpredictable, so you can never rely on them. It's important to plan your budget. The first week matters the most, but you should also keep a reminder and reinvest part of your earnings after the launch, else the game will just drop down underwater in the rankings and it will be very hard to get it up again. These are the few tools that we recommend to integrate. It's like a minimum list, we think. So tracking with AppFigure or Appany, uh, Flurry or AppSolar for creating events, funerals and cohorts. Chartboost for cross promotion with other developers and mobile app tracking if you want to be to do precise affiliate tracking. Our recommendation is when you need to spend some budget in marketing is to be careful about to focus on making profit first and be careful on which countries you target. Don't try to advertise worldwide unless you have a million dollar budget. Try to advertise in the countries where you get the higher ROI. Here, typically, the acquisition cost is the same in Denmark and in Spain. I would definitely not put any acquisition in Spain. Sorry, guys, but it proved that it was not as efficient as in Denmark. And so what's next for us? So the game is not dead yet. So we will try to push it in 2013. We're launching at the end of the month uh, the Android version. So it will be a fresh new start for us on another platform with less risk because we've proved the concept is working pretty well on iOS. And we will keep making updates every two to three months, adding more content, free or paid, to satisfy the existing user base, the community. And we'll be listening to their requests now, like. Sometimes we receive by email and forum suggestion of new elements, new type of uh, levels, and we will really f go in the direction of satisfying the players. Well, thank you. I hope I wasn't too fast, and if you have any question, feel free to ask me.
Thank you very much for your lecture. Uh, as I understand, uh, in uh, uh, on iOS, uh, it's a premium application. I is that correct? It's a free-to-play application. Oh, oh. but and and, and what wh what do you monetize? What's your monet monetization strategy? So, uh, let me try if I have a screenshot so I can show you. Um, we have a virtual currency called the mana, and with this mana that you earn by completing the levels, solving the puzzles, you buy elements and we have around 80 different elements some you get for free through the story mode some others if you want to use them to make your creation and share it in the online gallery you need to spend that mana at the beginning of one just one remark um, at the beginning when we launched we were too greedy on uh, giving the mana to the player so we received a lot of complaints uh, the rating on the store were like, um, it's not, uh, they force us to pay. It was not true. You, you could um, finish the game without paying, but it was a little bit too difficult. So we have been softening and giving more mana through the updates. And I think now we've got the good balance. Hi, quick question. You mentioned that, uh, you suggest that you reinvest part of the earnings as you're coming in, but where exactly have you found that you get the better return from that, on advertisement or on building updates for the game or? All right, so this is a slide I prepared for that. Um, I believe we should, you should reinvest a minimum of your earnings in pure marketing and you keep the rest for production of updates. Uh, the minimum we recommend is somewhere between 10 to 25%. And after it depends on how you convert in terms of ARPU and uh, sales. My, our recommendation is when you spend in marketing, do not, there's thousands of ways to acquire users, thousands of advertising networks. We try to limit every month to only picking two two to four, and uh, never do big tests. Like, we are still a small studio, so we never spend more than $2,000 when testing an advertising network. That's me. Um, typically, this is a repartition of our marketing budget. So we spend about 50% on chart boost, 25% on daily deals. Daily deals are promotion service which make your app free for a day and 25% on other types, such as traditional advertising networks with banners or buying from developers the installs. Wow, thanks, Sebastian. I myself have a couple of quest more questions, but unfortunately the time is running up, so we have to stop here and jump over to the next speaker. So thanks, you, thanks a lot, uh, Sebastian was a good uh, presentation. Thank you a lot. And if someone else has any questions, so you can get in touch with them directly. So thanks.